Hey guys, Devin here, and we're Baca Burrito, and for today's episode, we have a PK Fire deck profile. Stay tuned for the rest of the list. have for you phantom knights um but it also obviously has the ba engine so this is a pk fire deck um and this was voted upon on our facebook and instagram profiles so if you would like you guys can go ahead and follow those we're at baca burrito underscore pc on instagram and at baca burrito on twitter um so check us out over there um and then you could get more involved with the voting process for some of our videos as well um, that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started. This is Day Day's. Um, I highly recommend this deck. It's very fun. I'm actually looking to picking up uh, a, a version of this deck myself. Um, I'm interested in running a Utopic Draco Future, seeing as this deck can just spam out rank 3s. Alright, so getting started, uh, we have three copies of the Phantom Knights of Torn Scales. This card reads, you can discard one card and send one Phantom Knights card from your deck to the graveyard, except Torn Scales. Um, if another Phantom Knights card in your graveyard is banished while this card is in your graveyard, you can special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. You can only use each effect of the Phantom Knights of Torn Scales once per turn. So, the Phantom Knights of Torn Scales is very good because of the fact that he's, in Day Day's opinion, the best card in the deck. He's a better starter than Tour Guide and is the extender because of the fact that his discard effect uh, his discard is cost, not part of the effect. So even if the effect is negated, you um, that discard will still go through. Meaning you'll be able to extend far beyond your regular line of play just because of the fact that you were able to discard one of the monsters in your hand. Moving on to Kage Mucha Knight, we have three copies of three copies of him. Um, when this when you normal summon a level three monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. He cannot be used as synchro material. That last condition doesn't really matter because of the fact that you don't really synchro summon in this deck. Um, as you can see, uh, if you look ahead, there are no synchro monsters, so it's fine. Um, Kage Mucha Knight provides the benefit of being a level 3, so he can help you tutor into your rank 3s down below. And the fact that he his effect activates, so he's able to chain block your effects going forward. So... If you normal summon uh, Phantom Knights of Torn Scales and they have a response to that, uh, you're able to use Kage Mucha Knight on the normal summon to, spe um, to special summon itself. So you can chain block, so you'd be able to. So the only thing they'd be able to react to would be the Kage Mucha Knight. Um, again, he also provides the level 3 material that you need in this deck. The next card is the Phantom Knights of Ancient Cloak. What he says is, if this card is in attack position, you can target one dark monster on the field, change this card to defense position, and if you do, that monster gains 800 attack and defense until the end of your opponent's turn. You can banish this card from your graveyard, add one the Phantom Knights card from your deck to your hand, except the Phantom Knights of Ancient Cloak. You can only use each effect of Ancient Cloak once per turn. So, the best target usually um, would be a copy of Silent Boots, which, moving on, we have three copies of Silent Boots. Um, so, the reason why Silent Boots is probably the best searcher, or the best search target for Ancient Cloak, is the fact that if he searches for Boots, um, you have the ability to special summon itself if there's a Phantom Knights monster on field. Because Boots says, if you control the Phantom Knights monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon Silent Boots once per turn this way. You can banish this card from your graveyard, add one Phantom Knights spell or trap card from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of the Phantom Knights of Silent Boots once per turn. So, by using Ancient Cloak, you can either search him or you can search uh, Fog Blade or Wing. Um... Pretty much any of the Phantom Knights spells or traps as well, as well as extending into other copies of the monsters that you may need. Um, but again, Silent Boots is usually the best target because of that graveyard effect. Because if you banish him, again, you're able to add one the Phantom Knights spell or trap card from your deck to your hand. Um, moving on, we have Seer and Graf. 
Um, Day Day makes, made a specific point to say, Seer and Graf are the important BA monsters you never want to see in the hand, and you really only need two of them in the deck. Um, I'm more inclined to agree with that because of the fact that their effects um, you'll see in just a moment. If you control a monster that is not a Phantom Knight's monster, uh, destroy this card. All of the Phantom Knights share that effect, so I will not be rereading it. Um, you can only use one of these effects of Seer, Malbranch of the Burning Abyss once per turn, and only once that turn. Um, if you control no spell or trap cards, you can special summon this card from your hand. All Phantom Knight monster, or sorry, all Burning Abyss monsters share that effect as well. Um, and you can only special summon them that way once per turn. It's a very good effect helps you extend. However, if you control something that's not a fan uh, that's not a burning abyss, they will destroy themselves unless that effect is negated. So his second effect is if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one burning abyss monster in your graveyard except Seer uh, and special summon it. So he helps you extend into other copies of your burning abyss monsters. For example, Graph. Um, if you control a monster that is not a Burning Abyss monster, destroy this card. Uh, like I said, they all have that effect, and then he has the special summon effect for spell. Uh, if you control no spells or traps. However, he has this the added effect. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one Burning Abyss monster from your deck, except Graph. So, Seer will help you bring out a copy of any Burning Abyss from your graveyard, and Graph will help you bring out any copy of a Burning Abyss from your deck. Um, that will also give you three, uh, sorry, two level three materials for XC summoning. Uh, for example, you can make Levier, you can make Breaksword, Dante, etc., etc., and that's very beneficial to you because of the fact that you know you just kind of want to see as many of your cards as possible. Um, the next card you have is Tour Guide from the Underworld. When this card is normal summon, you can special summon one level 3 fiend monster from your hand or deck, but negate its effects. Also, it cannot be used as synchro material. Um, again, that synchro material thing does not matter in the least, because of the fact that tour guide will extend usually into skarm, which I'll cover in just a moment, but tour guide is probably your weakest point in the deck. Uh, if you summon this and it gets hit with an Ash Blossom or an Effect Veiler, you're stuck because you just burned your normal summon. Which is why Day Day went on to say that Torn Scales is a better, um, is a better starter and extender than Tour Guide. That being said, Tour Guide, when it goes off, is a very powerful card, and I would run, I truthfully would change this to a 2 of, not a 3 of, um, but we're gonna be tinkering with these ratios more in the future. Next... We have a copy of Farfa, Malbranch of the Burning Abyss, um, and his added effect is, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you could target one monster on the field, banish it until the end of the t until the end phase. So that's pretty good for getting around mo uh, monster negates because you'll be able to bait the negate if they and if they choose not to, you can uh, blink one of their monsters as long as it's not target immune, um, and if they don't have anything with that kind of protection, it, you just don't have to deal with that card uh, for the turn. Typically, though, that's an easy way to burn a negate from your opponent. Your next card is a copy of Fiendish Rhino Warrior. Um, I like this card, Day Day likes this card, however, I'm not sure how effective it is at one. But, Fiend monsters you control, except Fiendish Rhino Warrior, cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can send one Fiend monster from your deck to the graveyard, except Fiendish Rhino Warrior. You can only use this effect of Fiendish Rhino Warrior once per turn. So, I, in my head, this card is a much better extender at 2, but I do understand not wanting to clog up the deck unnecessarily. So, the benefits of Fiendish Rhino Warrior, you're able to send Farfa from the deck if you'd like, so that you can get a quick banish for the turn. Um, you're able to send any of your other Burning Abyss so that you could get the quick extension. Um, that's the only downside, it has to be a Fiend. So you can't choose any of the Phantom Knights monsters or Kage Mucha Knight, because of the fact that they're all Warriors. Moving on to your next card, we have Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. Um, this hand trap is... I think this hand trap is very, very necessary for this uh, specific format. When a card or effect is activated that includes any of these effects, 
quick effect, you can discard this card and negate the activation. Now it's important to note that this card does negate the activation, so that does leave it uh, pretty susceptible to cards like Witch's Strike, um, and there are a few others, um, but yes. So if the activation is negated, if they have a second copy of a card that can only activate once per turn, they can just go ahead and use that as well. Um, so this card says, add a card from the graveyard to the hand, deck, or extra deck. Uh, special summon a monster from the graveyard. Banish a card slash cards from the graveyard. Uh, you can only use this effect of Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion once per turn. So she's a hard once per turn, but if they're attempting to special summon monsters from the grave, banishing a card from the grave, or adding a card from the graveyard to the hand deck or extra deck, uh, you'll be able to stop that effect and just negate it. Um, so that's very, that's very good. So the next card is is Skarm, Malbranch of the Burning Abyss, which is, um, again, they share the first two effects of the other Burning Abyss monsters. But his second effect is, during the end phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it was sent there this turn, you can add one level three Dark Fiend from your deck to your hand, except Skarm. So this is your way of searching either, um, searching any of your other Burning Abyss monsters. So if you're not seeing Seer or Graph, you can add one at the end phase, or you could even add Tour Guide so that you can special summon another copy. Um, and if you summon Skarm off of Tour Guide, even though the effects are negated, once it goes to the graveyard, you're able to get that search during the end phase because uh, it just negates the effects on field. Last, the oh sorry, there's two more monsters left, um, which are pretty important to the deck. You have the Phantom Knights of Ragged Gloves, um, it has the effect that says, a dark Xyz monster that was summoned using this card on the field as an Xyz material gains this effect. It is Xyz summoned, it gains 1000 attack. You can banish this card from your graveyard, send one Phantom Knight's card from your deck to the graveyard. You can only use each of the Phantom Knight's Ragged Gloves effects once per turn. He's important because you, you're able to fuel your graveyard, so if you send in, uh, an Ancient Cloak or Silent Boots, you can banish them to further your plays to add any of your rank up spells or your uh, fog blades or your wings. Um, and the last monster in the main deck is one copy of the Phantom Knights of Stained Greaves. If a Phantom Knights monster is special summoned to your field except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. Then you can increase the level of this card by one. Uh, you can banish this card from the graveyard, special summon one, the Phantom Knights monster from your hand except uh, Phantom Knights of Stained Greaves, then you can increase its level by one. You can only use each effect of Stained Greaves once per turn. So this actually helps you facilitate plays going into level four, uh, sorry, rank four monsters, um, such as Raider's Knight or Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon are uh, his current two targets. But yeah, moving on, we have Foolish Burial, which just is Foolish Burial, lets you send one monster from your deck to the graveyard. Uh, Harpy's Feather Duster, because uh, Dede was finding that when he runs up against um, either Sky Striker or VW, the spells and traps are really problematic to face off against it. Uh, so he just wanted to get rid of spells and traps. Next you have the two Phantom, uh, Phantom Knights Rank Up Magics. So th this one is Rank Up Magic Force. Which says, during the main phase, banish one or more dark monsters from your graveyard. Then target one dark Xyz monster you control. Special summon from your extra deck. One, the Phantom Knight, Raid Raptor, or Xyz Dragon XYZ monster. Whose, um, whose rank equals that of the targeted monster you control. Plus the number of monsters banished by using it as material. Also, for the rest of this turn, after this card resolves... You cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck, except Xyz monsters. This is treated as an Xyz summon. Transfer its materials to the summon monster. You can only activate one rank up magic force per turn. So this card lets you easily go into uh, Dark Requiem, or even a copy of Ultimate Falcon. Because uh, Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon is, you know, a Raid Raptor monster. The next card we have is the Phantom Knight's Rake rank up magic launch this is a very very good card during the main phase target one dark Xyz monster you control with no materials special summon from your extra deck one dark Xyz monster that is one rank higher than that monster you control by using it as material and if you do attach this card to it as additional material this is treated as an Xyz material transfer the materials to the summon monster 
During your main phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one Dark Exceeds monster you control. Attach one of the Phantom Knights monster from your hand to that monster as material. So this card actually helps you go into Raider's Knight as well. And Raider's Knight is very, very good for this deck, and I'll explain that in just a moment. Then Day Day has two copies of Twin Twisters in the deck. Discard one card, then target up to two spells or traps on the field. Destroy them. Very straightforward. Helps him get, helps him clear the board so that he can swing or just OTK um, out some problematic control cards. So yeah. Um, the next card is Phantom Knight's Wings. So he has that at two copies. You get to target one face-up monster on the field. It gains 500 attack. Also, the first time that target would be destroyed by battle or card effect, this turn, it is not destroyed. You can banish this card from the graveyard, then target one the Phantom Knight's monster in your graveyard. Special summon it, but banish it when it leaves the field. You can only use this effect of Phantom Knight's Wings once per turn. So, Phantom Knight's Wings, it gives you a little bit of protection, and it also allows you to extend uh, with a monster in the graveyard. So if you only if you find yourself in a situation where you only have a level three, you're able to special summon another Phantom Knight so that you can go into another Xyz play. Next up, we have one copy of Imperial Order. Again, more spell hate. Uh, negate all spell effects on the field once per turn during the standby phase. You must pay 700 life points. This is not optional, meaning if it will kill you, if you have exactly 700 life points, you will die, um, or this card is destroyed. Um, however, if you have less than 700, you will survive because the card will destroy itself. Just something to keep in mind. Next up, and lastly, but sure as hell not least, we have Phantom Knight's Wings. Target one face-up monster on the field. It gains 500 attack. Also, nope, sorry, that's uh, Fogblade. Activate this card by targeting one effect monster on the field. Negate that face-up monster's effects. That face-up monster cannot attack. Also, monsters cannot target that face-up monster for attacks. When it leaves the field, destroy this card. You can banish this card from your uh, from your graveyard, then target one of the Phantom Knight's monster in your graveyard, and special summon it, but banish it when it leaves the field. You can only use each effect... Sorry, you can only use that last effect once per turn. So, Fogblade is like Fiendish Chain, which is also similar to something like impermanence however it, it does have to attach itself to that monster um that being said you can also save yourself from a game ending battle by targeting your own monster and that's come up once or twice for him um that being said that's not the best way to use the card but you're able to destroy it yourself using things like a uh, break sword so it does come up sometimes so that is it for the main deck. Moving on to the extra deck, um, we have Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon. Again, you never summon him the correct way. Um, I don't even know of three level 10 wing beast type monsters, but either way, it doesn't matter. He's unaffected by other card effects. You can detach one material from this card. For the rest of this turn, all monsters your opponent controls will lose 1,000 attack. Also, your opponent's cards and effects cannot be activated if this um, if this card has Raid Raptor Monster as Xyz material, it gains this effect. Once per turn during the end phase, um, monsters your opponent controls l lose 1,000 attack. If your opponent controls no monsters, inflict 1,000 damage to your opponent. Again, neither of those effects is likely to happen because of the fact that you're not summoning him correctly. But it is a very good monster and it's very hard to out 3,500 attack. Next up, we have Beatrice, Lady of the Eternal. You're able to rank up this monster on top of a Dante. Um, you transfer its materials to her. And if it's summoned this way, the following effect cannot be activated this turn. However, once per turn on a quick effect, you can detach one material from this card and send one, monster f one card from your deck to the graveyard. Um, if this card in your possession is destroyed by your opponent's card effects and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one Burning Abyss monster from your extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. So this can help you get a Dante with no material. Not that that's the best thing. However, if you were running the Utopic Future package, um, you'd be able to ha have that, say a Levier, say a Breaksword, and then since none of them are number monsters, you could rank up directly into uh, Utopic F-Zero. Next up, we have the Grand Mac Daddy Arc Rebellion Xyz Dragon. 
This exceeds summon monster cannot be destroyed by card effects. You can detach one material from this card. This card gains attack equal to the total original attack of all other monsters face up on the field. Uh, then if this card has a dark exceeds monster as material, negate the effects of all other face up monsters on the field. This includes your own. Um, after this effect resolves, you cannot declare attacks with other monsters for the rest of this turn. Uh, you can only use this effect of Arc Rebellion once per turn. See, the thing is, I'd be inclined to say that, oh no, that's a detriment, but oftentimes he's well over 10,000 attack, and if the opponent has anything less than, say, uh, say it's even ten, just 10,000, if the opponent has anything less than 2,000 on the field, you can just swing and win the game, because it also negates all other monster effects if there's a Dark Exceeds uh, monster as material, which is crazy. This monster's so good, and he doesn't even get destroyed if he's summoned with one of his alternate ways. Because he can't be, because it counts as an Xyz summon. Um, next up, we have Dark Requiem Xyz Dragon. If this card has Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon as material, it gains the following effect. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card, uh, then target one face up monster your opponent controls, change its attack to zero, and if you do, this card gains attack equal to that monster's original attack. And when your opponent activates a monster effect, quick effect, you can detach one material from this card and negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. Then you can special summon one Xyz monster from your graveyard. Um, it's a very good card. However, I think it would be cut for Utopic Draco Future. Um, Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon says you can detach two materials, then target one face-up monster your opponent controls. It, its attack becomes half its current attack, and if it does, this card gains that loss attack. Um, very straightforward, so for example, if the opponent has a monster with 1200 attack, it would become 600, and then Dark Rebellion would go up 600, which would be 3100. Um, which is pretty cool, it can put up some big numbers, but you don't typically want him to be the only monster you have on field, unless it, you're in a simplified game state. Uh, next up, Raider's Knight, this is the one I was telling you guys about. Uh, this card is always treated as a Phantom Knights and Raid Raptor card. You can detach one material from this card, special summon from your extra deck one Phantom Knights, Raid Raptor, or Xyz, uh, Xyz Dragon XYZ monster that is one rank higher or lower than this card. By using this face-up card, you control as material, but destroy it during your opponent's next end phase. This is treated as an Xyz summon and transfer the materials. You can only use this effect once per turn. So if you have him on field, you can just detach a material and special summon Arc Rebellion, which is excellent. And then it has a dark material on it as well. So that can be very problematic for your opponent. Um, it's very good because if you summon it that way, Arc Rebellion also will not be destroyed because that's treated as a proper XC summon. Moving on, we have two copies of Dante, Traveler of the Burning Abyss. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card and choose a number from 1 to 3. Then send that many cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard until the end of this turn. Um, this card gains 500 attack... This card gains 500 attack for each card sent to the graveyard this way. If this card attacks, it is changed to defense position at the end of the battle phase. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one Burning Abyss card in your graveyard, accept this card, and add it to your hand. That makes it very easy to recycle your Skarms, your Graphs, your Seers, um, all of that. Oh, and even Farfa. Um, so you can get multiple banishes. But um, the, the main thing about this deck going forward and this card in particular is it's a level through uh, sorry a rank three um next up we have levier the sea dragon which will be at two um when we introduce the um utopic draco future it takes two level three monsters once per turn you can detach one material from this card then target one banished level four or lower monster special summon that target for, to your field very good once the phantom knights banish themselves for their effects you can just go ahead and special summon them again um, the Phantom Knights of Breaksword, uh, two level 3 monsters again, level uh, rank 3 warrior. Once per turn you could detach a material from this card, then target one card you control, and one card your opponent controls. Destroy them. If this Xyz summon card is destroyed, you could target two Phantom Knights monsters with the same level in your graveyard. Special summon them, and increase their levels by one. You cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, except dark monsters. The craziest part about that is that destruction effect is procced by himself as well. So you'd be able to special summon, for example, uh, a copy of Boots and a copy of uh, Cloak 
onto your field and they'd be treated as level fours then you'd be able to overlay into raider's knight which is amazing for this deck um but other than that you're also able to pop your opponent's cards if you wanted to um that's very good as well uh that's it for the exceeds monsters uh moving on to the link monsters we have one copy of apollosa bow of the goddess uh it takes two or more monsters with different names except tokens you can only control one uh, the original attack of this card becomes 800 times the number of materials used for this Link Summon. Once per chain, when your opponent activates a monster effect, quick effect, you can make this card lose 800 attack, and if you do, negate the activation. Um, if this card was dark, it would probably pair pretty well with um, gloves, because that would give it an extra negate, but it's not. So here we are with Opelosa with the standard uh, 800, uh, pr most likely 3200 or 2400 which would be um, 4 and 3 negates respectively. Apollos is very good if you just need the extra... If you summon a lot and you need the extra negate, Apollos is the way to go. Next up, we have the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish. Uh, during your main phase, you could send one Phantom Knights monster from your deck to the graveyard and set one Phantom Knights spell or trap directly from your deck uh, to your field, to your side of the field. Um, if a... Dark Exceeds Monster is Special Summoned to a zone this card points to while this monster is on the field, except during the damage step. You can target one card on the field and destroy it. You can only use each effect of Bardish once per turn, and this card cannot be used as a link material. So you can't use him to make Apollosa. However, that doesn't really matter because he's an excellent card by himself. Um, if you're able to Exceed Summon with him, you're able to pop a card on their side of the field if it's something problematic, if you need it to bait the negate before you use, say, Arc Rebellion um, in a move-it-or-lose-it kind of situation. He also has 2100 attack, which comes up. Um, he can also set any of your copies of Fog Blade, so you could get a negate. He could set Wings if you needed a little more attack for, to push for game. Um, he could also set either of the rank-up magics. So, Bardish is probably one of the best cards, but you also don't need him at more than one, two tops. Um, if you're if you're really afraid of him getting banished or something uh, And last but not least we have Cherubini the Ebon Angel of the Burning Abyss He takes two level three monsters Monsters this card points to cannot be destroyed by battle uh, Sorry by card effects if this card would be destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect you can send one other card you control um, To the graveyard instead unfortunately, that's a send not a destroy Um you could send one level 3 or lower monster from your deck to the graveyard, then target one Burning Abyss monster on the field. He can choose himself. It gains attack and defense equal to the attack and defense of the monster sent until uh, sent to the graveyard until the end of this turn. Also, you can only use this effect of Cherub Cherubini, Ebon Angel of the Burning Abyss, once per turn. So, he allows you to just dump car uh, Burning Abyss monsters from your deck to the graveyard uh, pretty effectively at that. Um... That's been it for the main deck. If you want me to run through the side deck real quick, I will. It's two copies of Nibiru, three copies of Ash, three copies of Droll and Lockbird, uh, three copies of Dark Ruler No More, one copy of Called by the Grave, and three copies of Shared Ride. Uh, that's been it for the Burning Abyss deck profile. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, let us know what we can do to improve these types of videos because we'd like to keep making them. And uh, next week, we have a Drytron deck profile. That will be my deck profile. Um for you guys. Thank you guys for thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, we've been Baca Burrito. You guys are awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm.